Are you a content creator looking for effects to bring your videos to a whole new level? Welcome to Production Crate. Production Crate is the resource for graphics, visual effects, music, and much more. On top of that, these assets are compatible with your editing software. Get your unlimited free effects today or premium effects for only $49 a year. Make it awesome. What's going on guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys a couple tips that I've collected in order for you to improve your editing, to actually take your videos to a whole new level. If you guys are excited, make sure to smash the like button down below. Subscribe if you're new. I would say let's get started as always right after the intro. What's going on guys? My name is Alex. Welcome back to a brand new Vegas 17 tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to use that brand new auto looks feature that Vegas Pro has recently dropped. If you guys want to see the walkthrough, uh, make sure to watch the video all the way until the end because then at the end card, you can click through the walkthrough if you guys have seen it yet. So now that we are in Vegas Pro 17, I just dragged in a clip of just some mountains off of video blocks actually. This is just going to be an example clip of what I'm going to show you guys. So the auto looks feature was already in Vegas Pro, I believe, but I think they just upgraded to next level in Vegas Pro 17. So, so what it actually means is that it's going to apply some color grading presets. Let's say that you don't have $900 just laying around somewhere to spend on really, really expensive uh, color correction presets. You can now just use this awesome uh, auto looks feature. Okay, so how you want to do that is you want to go to the video effects tab and you want to basically see the auto looks feature at the very top of the list because right here it's alpha so as you can see, if you click on there, you have many different templates, way more than in Vegas Pro 16. So basically what this contains is just more and more color correction presets than we had before. So right now, if you drag on the default onto the clip, what you can do is basically choose from different templates, drag the default one onto it, and then you can just arrow down in this menu and then you can just like see which one fits best. But what you can also do is you can just pick one because right here you also see previews of how that looks. So I'm just gonna pick the Muffalo 33. Let's drag it on there. As you can see, it drags on a little bit more of a like a yellow, brown, orange-ish kind of effect. But if you want to do a little bit more like dramatic and contrasty, uh, what you can do is you can also add in the 90s music video one. That's really gonna, like they say, just like the 90s music video effect. But let's say they want to add in a really cinematic one, uh, which I believe this one, the, the, the Nate Gunner, which is really, really cool. It's basically that simple. It's not gonna be a 10 minute video because these are just presets that are in Vegas Pro that it came with. Vegas Pro. I did not buy anything. I did not download anything like specifically for this. This is just in your Vegas Pro 17. So if you feel the need, like I just want to upgrade from version 16 to 17 or from Vegas 15 to 17, make sure to check out the link in the description right there. You can click on it and you can just directly upgrade to Vegas Pro 17. Countless people have been asking me about it. Alex, is it worth it? What is the difference between Vegas Pro 17? What is the difference between uh, Vegas Pro 15 and 17 and or 16 and 17? Guys, they're like 30 more new features. All features in Vegas Pro 16 have been upgraded, improved, everything like that. So if you want to pick it up, link is down below. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. This is how to use it. You can just choose from many different templates. You want to drag it onto your video and you're good to go. It is really that simple. And that's how amazing uh, Vegas Pro 17 is. And they provide some awesome color grading presets for you. Right now, I have a clip of us actually working in the entire living room. This is just part of the vlog that's releasing next week when everything is completely done so right now we're gonna basically color grade this clip a little bit more like you know it depends on like what you want like cinematic or you want to add in like warm colors color like colder colors so in order to actually do that you would actually go to the video effects tab and then scroll all the way up until you see color uh, grading but what I can recommend is to go to your keyboard and you want to press alt and G then it's gonna bring up these markers which basically means that you can mess with the lift the gamma the gain and the off 
offset. You don't want to pay attention to this vector scope, not really that much, but more on these four markers right here. Okay, so first of all, these four markers are actually going to impact your clip, but on top of that as well, you can also load in LUT filters. So right here it says look LUT, so if you click on there, you can actually like hit browse and you can you can actually select the dot cube files, which are basically your LUT filters. So let's go ahead and click on browse and then you can actually like manually look for the LUT filters, load them in and then you can apply them onto your videos. But right now, those four markers, we're going to actually focus on these ones. So let's say that we want to apply a little bit more of a red kind of tint onto it. If you're going to apply this and drag it to the red, it's going to impact it a lot, as you can see. So you want to make sure that you will just apply it just a little bit, because if you're going to do it too much, it's going to look end up looking like this. The red is just going to be like overpowering your entire clip, how much red you want to apply onto it. So let's go ahead and drag it just a little a tiny bit to the top left, which is going to impact the clip just a little bit. Now, if you want to reverse everything or reverse this entire marker, you just want to click on this undo button and then everything is going to jump straight to zero again. Okay, so right now the gamma is also a clip where you can actually like select the midtones and everything like that. So if you drag it on, you want to make sure that you will actually level the colors. So if you're going to apply also red on the gamma, you're actually cl your clip is going to look all red and it's not going to look natural. So you just want to make sure to just, for example, drag this one into the blue or green kind of area. Now the gain is completely a different story. This is going to actually set like a complete different tone onto your clip. So if you drag this one to the pink one, it will actually like also blend in with the blue just a little bit. So what I would do for a cinematic look is you would just drag this one to the green or to the blue, one of those two, and that's going to make it look a little bit more cinematic than, than usual. If you want to create a cinematic preset, you would actually, for example, put this one a little bit more to the purple kind of side of things, or maybe a little bit more to the blue because if you keep this on zero it lo actually looks pretty pretty accurate so if you're going to also pay attention to those markers at the bottom you can actually like select how intense the color is going to be in the offset and obviously the gain as well so i would just mess around with those markers until you're happy with it so i would say just also add in like it looks like you're adding a little bit more contrast to it but if you go to the lift if you bring that down it's going the contrast is going to increase like quite a bit so i would just go ahead and drag it for example to 0.04 that's going to actually like make it look very very, very nice. The only thing that we've now covered is the color wheels. But if you go to the color channels, you can also check the red, the green and the blue. So if you drag it on, you can also like change those markers up like separately. So if you want to say the gamma has a little bit less red, you can also add that in. But if you say like the gain has a little bit too much green, you can also bring down that marker and you can actually like level it that way. Okay, so another feature is like I've mentioned the input LUT where you can actually like browse and obviously like select your LUT, but you can also put you know, like change the strength. So let's say that you want to have a LUT filter, but not like at complete strength. You can also just bring down this marker, which is going to like lower the opacity about halfway or just as much like as much as you want of that LUT filter. It's not going to apply like the entire filter onto it. So let's say that one LUT filter is a little bit too strong. You can just actually like bring this down this strength marker and that's going to actually like lower the opacity of that LUT filter. Okay, so on the very right, we have color curves. RGB stands for red, green and blue. So let's say that you only want to have red you know focused on you can just only select the red button and you can just mess with this marker and bring it down bring it up but you want to if you want to like change up everything you can just select rgb and then you can just mess with this paragraph right here so you can actually like optimize it and see how you want this for yourself but if you also want to like only change the blue you can just select the blue checkbox and this line will also start to appear blue and you can also bring that up you can also bring it down and just make this clip look like how you want to needs or actually like you know imagining like this clip for example a time lapse or just anything like that a cinematic role it really depends on what you want and what you're looking for basically now if you're just experimenting it's also very easy just to reset everything if you click on reset all that's just going to be the standard clip but what you can also do in terms of like color grading not necessarily like messing with all those markers separately is you can like load in the LUT filters and if you go to video effects right here it says LUT what you can also do is press uh, alt g again so those markers will disappear here. And right here, you have all kinds of LUT filters you can apply onto your clip. So let's say that we're going to apply uh, this blue mood on here. But let's say that we want to add in this cinema one. But if we drag them over them, it's going to look like very dramatic. So if you want to lower the opacity, for example, of the second LUT filter, you want to go to strength and just, ha um, you know, bring that down halfway or even like just like three quarters of that entire filter. So it's not going to look as strong. And obviously you're like, you're 
free to add in as many lock fil filters as you want. Just make sure to just like mess with the opacity. Don't make sure that your clip doesn't look like oversaturated and that there's like 10 lock filters on it with like the strength all the way up until like 10 because you because otherwise you won't be able to tell like the cinematic look and it's just like it's just going to look like a little bit of a mess. If you want to undo all those filters and you want to have like a clean clip, you can just bring up the orange and teal one. You guys know that one and also just bring down the strength just a little bit so you can just apply other lock filters on it as well. All right, guys. So beside all the color grading, if you're a content creator and you're looking for awesome effects, not sponsored in any way, if you're looking for assets for explosions, music, sound effects, lower thirds, all everything you can imagine, make sure to check out the second link in the description. If you go to productioncrate.com, you will actually find like tons of free effects that you can get. They're to totally free. Just sign up for a free account and start downloading. But if you want to get like some next level premium effects, you can actually sign up for an account and get a pro membership for only $49 a year. That sounds a lot, but it's only four bucks a month. Just one less cup of coffee each month. You will get like access to so many, so many awesome effects, guys. The second link is in the description as well. Basically, if you guys don't understand yet what HDR is, it stands for high dynamic range. High dynamic range or HDR is a technique used in imaging and photography to reproduce a greater dynamic range of luminosity than what is possible with standard digital imaging or, or photographic techniques. So before we get into this, I would like to give you guys a little introduction to uh, Gary Ripholz. He's actually one of the people that also created Vegas Pro 17 and he has a really, really great approach. So I'm going to show you guys exactly what HDR is all about. So Gary Ripholz, take it away. Vegas Pro continues to lead the way in working in high dynamic range color with support for both HDR10 and HLG formats and working in the ACES 1.1 color space from the beginning of the process to the final delivery. Setting your project up for HDR is as simple as choosing the format you want to work in from the drop-down list in the project properties box. Vegas Pro sets everything appropriately, but naturally you are completely free to customize your settings to suit your particular needs or style. You can also customize your settings to match your HDR hardware, and if you change the default settings, you can save custom presets so that setting up the next project is even easier and faster. Editing in HDR feels just like editing any other footage. All of the same tools give you all the same editing power as ever. Of course, HDR is all about color, so the color grading panel and the video scopes are HDR compatible, right down to applying custom LUTs and even creating your own LUTs that you can apply to future projects or other footage in your current project. Finally, you can deliver in both HDR10 and HLG formats. You can even upload your HDR projects directly to YouTube. YouTube recognizes it as HDR and plays it back that way. So you can deliver true HDR directly to your viewers from your website or your YouTube channel. Vegas Pro takes HDR seriously so that you can seriously deliver HDR. All right, guys, so now that you know a little bit more about HDR and what it is, so like I've mentioned, you want to go to the project video properties tab and you want to make sure that you go to uh, HDR mode and you want to place that one to HDR 10. It's going to adjust all these settings depending on, on the mode that you pick right here. Uh, so once we picked HDR 10, we're going to click on OK. So let's go ahead and drag in a file right now. So then what we can do is we can also go to the project media tab right here and you want to right click on the thumbnail of this image, go to properties and right here you have the color space. Now you want to also pick the one depending on which one you're editing. For example, a Canon log, rad footage from like these really, really huge, expensive, high quality cameras. So we all have kinds of log files. So we have Sony. So you want to basically pick one, pick this one, uh, depending on which device that you shot your uh, footage with. For example, pick this one. Let's click on OK. And now you're basically ready to actually produce your videos the right way with like high dynamic range. There's a new feature in Vegas Pro 17. I'm going to give you guys a little backstory and I'm going to also show you guys a tutorial from Gary Repholz that's gonna make it under because he explains it way way better than me so let's go ahead and check out this little clip the video scopes window opens by default when you open the color grading panel so click the color grading button now if you previously modified this mode and the video scopes do not open choose view windows video scopes to open them in the video scopes click the settings button click the enable st.2084 HDR scope checkbox and the 10-bit scale checkbox to activate those features. Click OK. 
These settings will be ignored if you switch back to a non-HDR project. Once you are ready to deliver your video, choose File, Render As. The Render As format list is filtered to just those formats that support HDR. Select the format you want to render to and one of the HDR10 or HLG render templates. Then follow the normal procedure for saving your rendered file. When you've made all of your choices, click the Render button. You can also deliver your HDR project directly to your YouTube channel, and YouTube will show your movie in HDR. To export your project directly to YouTube, choose File, Share Online, Upload to YouTube. Select the HDR radio button. Click the HDR drop-down list and choose either HDR10 or HLG from the list. Click the Upload button and follow the prompts from there. All right, so the last thing that you can do is you can open up the video scopes. So you want to just press Alt G on your keyboard. That's going to bring up these markers at the bottom. So right here we have the settings button. You want to also click that. And you want to make sure that you will click on enable ST2084 HDR scope. And you want to make sure that that one is checked. So then we're going to click on OK. And then you can basically uh, start like coloring and do your normal color grading presets. You can also import LUT filters uh, right here. If you click on browse, you can just open up these lock filters and you can you, you want to open up the file location, load them in, and then you can just go ahead and start uh, using these lot filters. But what you can also do is using these gamma to gain the offset and the lift. And that's basically how you can adjust these colors and make it really, really cinematic. So guys, if you want to learn more and if you want to read everything just like on your own tempo, make sure to check out the link in the description. I will link to an article about the HDR support. So guys, that's it for this really short tutorial. I'll catch you guys obviously on next week with brand new videos. Have a great weekend and I'll see you guys in my next video.